So this next lesson is now focused on the details of beam calibration for high energy photons. As I had seen that a lot of participants are doing this and they certainly know everything about beam calibration. So now I repeat some things. Maybe I can address some things which I have experienced as a personal experience, uh, especially with beam positioning, with another position of a chamber. That can be quite tricky, and you will exercise today. <laughs> so in the following dosimetry means, because dosimetry has so much uh, interpretations, here, the symptom means the determination of absorbed dose to water under reference conditions in the clinical beam of a radiation delivery unit accelerator using calibrated ionization chamber. This is what I mean with the symmetry. And this is also frequently referred to as beam calibration. I want to, this is the content principles of a calibration procedure, performance of a calibration procedure, correction factors, and determination of the radiation quality Q or the quality index which is required for what? There are so many people who knows that. Why we need the, K, the, the Q, the quality of the photons? Why we need that? Hmm? Yes, that can be a, 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 an answer. You need a quality correction factor, a KQ, and the KQ is dependent of Q. So therefore, we need this um, a measure for radiation quality. Now, let me start with some words. We need a protocol to do that. Dosimetry protocols or code of practice state the procedures to be followed when calibrating a clinical photon or electron beam. The choice of which protocol to use can be left to individual radiotherapy departments or jurisdiction of individual countries. Uh, I think that in many countries now, the code of practice TRS-398 from developed by the International Atomic Energy Agency is now in use. There are some countries which do not use it. America, they have their own protocol. Germany has their own protocol, uh, which is also valid in, in, in Austria and in Switzerland. So, and, and even in the, in the Scandinavian countries, for a long time they had their own protocol, but now they are switching to, also to the TRS. So in, there are some debates on, on, on certain things, and they cannot agree each how to do, manage these different opinions on, on certain problems. So therefore, the, the Americans have their own protocol, and also in Germany we are not. We have some things which we think can be done in, in a better way. Whether this is true, I don't know. So the similar protocols are generally issued by national, regional, or international organizations. So there are some examples for nationals. The UK has an own, uh, OK. <laughs> we will wait. OK. <laughs> um, we have national protocols, uh, uh, regional protocols. So American Association of Medical Physics, this is for North America. And for Canada, we had for a long time a protocol in Netherlands and Belgium and also the Nordic Association of Clinical Physics. And we have this international code of practice issued by the International Atomic Energy Agency called TRS-398. This is an important message. A dosimetry protocol provides three essentials. It provides the formalism. It provides the procedure, and it provides, what else? The data which you need. 
So it provides an, all the data and, and tables which are required. To use a calibration ionization chambers traceable to standard laboratory photosymmetry. Uh, there are, no, oh, that's not true anymore. Uh, 20 years ago, we had two different type of protocols. One are using ionization chambers calibrated in air camera. And I think they may be still in use in some countries. Is it true? Are all your chambers now calibrated in water? Yeah. It was not true 10 years ago. It was, uh, it was I remember also in, in Bangladesh at the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Protocols based on the calibration methods in absorbed those to water. By the way, the calibration in, in air camera is by far the most oldest uh, method. And what is the re reason for that? Because uh, it seems to be very practical and, 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 and natural if we want to measure absorbed dose, why we should use an ionization chamber calibrated in air camera. That seems to be um, a detour. The reason is that in the primary standard laboratory, the measurement of air camera was established in a very good way and very precise. Establishment of measurements of water absorbed dose in the primary standard laboratory for a long time was not doable because you, you cannot use an ionization chamber because <laughs> It must first calibrate it, it's impossible. So you have to introduce a method to measure, absorb dose with different devices, different than ionization chambers. And one famous thing is the water calorimeter, which is now well understandable and works very fine. Other one was, uh, was the, uh, at, uh, Free air chamber, which works for, for small energies, but not for high energies. Uh, uh, the, the Faraday cap, where you can irradiate with, with electrons and you can absorb all electrons. That was one. I think it was the two most important things for, for, for the uh, establishment. You, you say it's the establishment of water absorbed dose as a primary. So, only if it was possible to have a very good system now based in water on, on a water calorimeter, now primary standards have the capability to say this is really the water absorbed dose, and therefore now we can calibrate with them. So there's some history to that. So the principles are now the following suppose that the dose in water is well known at five centimeter depths in the water film under so-called calibration conditions, and these are the uh, calibration conditions. The beam quality is cobalt-60 radiation. We have a field size of 10 by 10. SST is 100 centimeter. We have a water phantom. Measuring depth in water is five centimeter. Positioning of a cylindrical chamber with a central electrode at measuring depth. Very important. This is calibration condition. Assume we have uh, we know the dose under these conditions. A cylindrical chamber is then placed with its center at the depth, at the depth of five centimeter water phantom. And then we can simply obtain the calibration factor by the known dose to water by our measurement. What we have, the charge. Under, uh, under reference conditions, so we had to refer to certain air pressure, uh, air temperature, oh, saturation effect in ionization chamber is almost negligible, polarity effect is another story which, which we'll cover later on. So if we do that, we can simply obtain the calibration factor and now the dosimetry is extremely simple. If we have an ionization chamber calibrated with this calibration factor, which is called N, D, W, and the Q0 re refers to cobalt 60. We measure charge, 
we correct for this air pressure and multiply with that. So it cannot be more simpler. So the symmetry is extremely simple. That's done. So this is reading of the dosimetry corrected for high influence quantities. That means air pressure and so on. And this is a calibration vector, which is uh, just defined as I had shown one slide before. So this is an example of such a uh, calibration factor in a, if you buy an, an ionization chamber. This is an example from, from I think, from Canitronics, Wellhoeker, or now Eber. And they tell you here, uh, this is uh, NW, and, uh, and given a value. By the way, by the way, you see the uncertainty here is 2.2%. Quite a lot. And in, in any protocol, you will find this number. You will find the uncertainty. But 2.2% calibration factor, is that really true? No. Again, I will refer to this uncertainty concept. Uh, there's, there's a document. It's, it's called GUM, the Guide for the Expression of uncertainty in measurement. You can find it in, in the internet. And I really commend you to, to try to copy it, to take it out, GUM, G-U-M, Guide for the Expression of Uncertainties in Measurement. And there is, it's, it's, it's many things are to say, but they are saying the uncertainty should be expressed as standard uncertainty as rel or can, it can be expressed as relative standard uncertainty. Relative means that you have the uncertainty in percent. Standard means it refers to a probability of six of, of, the, of the standard of the variance. And then you know that if you have a variance, 67 percent probability you have that the, that the value is within this plus minus 67 percent. But you can also ex uh, express the uncertainty with a so-called coverage factor so that you have a higher probability that the uncertainty is in. If you use, and you look carefully in here, it's, it's very difficult to read. So the reported expanded uncertainty, so this is a so-called expanded uncertainty with a coverage factor of two, that meaning that the standard uncertainty is just 1.1%. And it expressed as a, as a uh, expanded uncertainty with 2.2 percent. So don't don't make a mistake to take this as a standard uncertainty. So this chamber is now to be used in a beam with another quality Q, such as high energy photons and high energy electrons. So this is a formula uh, for the definition of absorbed dose to water in cobalt 60, and for otherwise, we simply add a correction factor. This is the famous KQ correction factor, which is taking into account that we do not have now the reference uh, irradiation quality, which is cobalt 60. We are now applying it to any other correction, uh, uh, radiation type. So this correction factor depends then hmm? from the uh, energy, you can also say quality. Our, okay, quality in our meaning the energy or the energy distribution, the, the, the spectrum. But it also depends from the construction of the ionization chamber. So each, each chamber has a specific own KQ value and also depending on energy. It's called the beam quality correction factor here. So and this is now the principle of the calibration procedure. The dose in water is our measured charge, the, the uh, um, calibration factor, and this KQ. So again, dosimetry is very simple if we have a knowledge on this. So very frequently, the common reference quality is, is cobalt 60. I, I think in 99% of KQ values, which are offered 
the quality used for calibration is cobalt 60. But the French primary standard laboratory is also offering ionization chambers calibrated in electrons. And there's a tendency now, yeah, or even the, all, uh, the uh, NPL in the UK is offering ionization chambers calibrated in other qualities or type. And I think there's a tendency. Who has a cobalt 60? It is, it's decreasing now. Many institutes do not have anymore a cobalt 60 machine. So why we should have a calibration factor based on cobalt 60? So I, I think the Swiss, in Switzerland, they are trying to introduce ionization chambers which are offering calibration factors directly for 6 MV or 15 MV. So I think in 10 years, we will not have any more this case. You will is given here, though, but you will have now uh, more modern KQ values. So for cobalt 60, we say the KQ value, uh, K, KQ0 is automatically left. And then it means that the uh, calibration uh, quality was cobalt 60. How to get the beam quality correction factor, this KQ? How to get it? And if you look in the TRS protocol, they think the first choice is a measured one, a measured one. So some, I told you already, some uh, standard laboratories are able to offer you a measured. But this is only very rare. So the second choice, when no experiment data are available or it's difficult to measure KQ directly, calculated correction factors have been used. And the, the KQ values, which are provided in the TRS protocol, are all calculated KQ values. So the properties of KQ is the value of KQ are dependent on the quality of radiation. That means if you consider the, the energy, but also the machine. If you have different machines with same energies, say 15 MV uh, varian and 15 MV from, from elector, maybe different in the spectrum, of course. Yeah? Hmm? Now each machine is producing different energy spectrum. You you always. Hmm? Yeah, it can be different. Yeah, it can be different. So, so we 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 cannot use a KQ value for 15 MV photons. It's impossible because it may be different from from. Another thing, we never know exactly. 15 MV photons, how they are produced with the 15 MV MEV electrons. MEV electrons hitting the target. But we never know exactly whether it's 15 or 15.1. We have no idea what is the real energy. We have no idea what is the energy spread. We have no idea on, 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 the, on, on the geometric ring. We don't know nothing about the, the primary electrons. Therefore, the quality, that means the spectrum of photons coming out, is also depending on the on the, on the primary collimator. It's depending on the secondary collimator. It may be depend on on the on the multi leaves and so on and so on. So the spectrum coming out is different for each. So therefore, later on, we we need something more precise to to know what is meant with this Q. And each type of anisation chamber needs a particular KQ. Again, it's a little bit strange. Why is this the case? Because the details of construction of an anisation chamber has also an influence of the secondary electrons, which are finally counted in the, in the air cavity. If you have a thick wall made of PMMA, or you have a graphite wall, or whatever. All these details are influencing the finally the measured charge. So each chamber has a different KQ. So therefore, you would have normally such uh, uh, tables. So we have different ionization chambers here. 
and we have the KQ as a function of the beam quality. And then I have not put the numbers in because I want to tell a little more on, on beam quality. The abdos, the abdos water is to be termed in the point P in the water in a reference depth. So if we look in the absence, so okay, this is also some very interesting point. In the absence of the chamber, the dose is given by is given by this expression, the point, the measuring point is at reference step. That is meant by this expression. Using the chamber, the dose is given by, by, by this expression. The question now is, what, what we are measuring with the chamber is, is the integral of, of all this and how we have to position the chamber now. We can imagine if we put the, the ionization chamber a little bit higher, it will be more dose if we go down. So, so how to position the chamber? This is a discussion of that. Here we have our, our ionization chamber like that. This is the centric volume. Is this correct? Or is this correct? Hmm? This one, this one? This, this one is okay? Yeah. Yeah. The answer is a little bit strange. If you perform a depth dose measurement, this is correct. The effective point of measurement. Yeah. But for beam calibration, It does not matter because it is taken into account in the KQ value. You can put all these things in the KQ value. So that is just an explanation, though. If, if it is filled with, with air, though, there is no attenuation, though, there is a, 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 a perturbation of the, of the those fall up in the, in, the, in the water introducing the air cavity. So we have here our cavity. So this is now a demonstration, a little bit exaggerated, if you have introduced an air cavity. Which positioning is correct? So one may think that the correct way is the positioning of the chamber as its effective point of measurement. You said this already. This is true for depth dose measurements. But for a calibration measurement, it is... This, it does not matter as long as the positioning is well defined and any deviation of the correct position is taken into account in the calibration factor. Now that's the truth, it's calibration factor or in the quality correction factor. So, and now it's, it's very interesting. We do have different protocols and we have different prescriptions now how to position a chamber, especially a cylindrical chamber. And I can already tell this now, for photons, following the TRS, the prescription, and that's important, it's not, it's not a, a scientific reason for that, only the prescription is position the center of the cylindrical chamber in the depth of measurement. Following TRS for photons. Following TRS for electrons, the prescription is position the effective point in the event. In the German protocol, we do have a prescription position always the effective point, whether it's, whether it's uh, photons, electrons, or cobalt-60, even for cobalt-60. So again, I think this um, illustrates the fact that you can do what you want, but you have to follow exactly prescription. That is the important thing. So if you want to follow the TS remained, you have to exactly follow the prescription which is written down. And I remember, <laughs> it's just, it may be fun, but it's really fun. I was, again, I won't, I'm not telling where it was. It was in a, in a hospital somewhere, and uh, people showed me their, their method of calibration of electrons, and they told me, 
we don't wish to get always our hand wet with water. We are using a phantom, a solid phantom. We will discuss this problem later on. What is what is some problems? And they said we do a calibration at the maximum dose. We do this at the maximum dose using the KQ which are given in the protocol, which is completely wrong. So the, the, again, this is my, my message. You must exactly follow the prescription which is laid down in the protocol. And they say it very clearly what, what, what has to be done. So this is, and, and the position again, it's very easy to, 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 to prescribe in terms of the so-called reference point of the chamber. So for cylindrical chambers, the reference point is in the center of the cylinder at the uh, central electrode. This is called the reference point of the chamber. And this point is normally uh, made visible by the company. They, they include some information, a ring or black ring or something else, saying this is the point, of the, uh, the reference point of the chamber. And it's important to know because the prescription is position the reference point or position the effective point at the measuring depth. So this is for plain pearl chambers. The reference point is on the center of the front surface at the inner air cavity. Okay. Again, one remark to that. We all assume that if we do a depth dose measurement with a plain pearl chamber, if we adjust our reference point, then we get directly the correct depth dose. Yeah, this is our assumption. It was written everywhere. Now we know more and more that using the Marcus chamber, where is the inner surface if you do it in water? It's not so clear. If you use the rose chamber, again, it's not so clear. The effective point is, in reality, some, a little bit lower than, than, than at the inner surface. 2.2 millimeter, don't. Uh, but it, it, you can see it if you, if you compare, uh, say, Monte Carlo depth dose curves which you think are true, and you compare it with, uh, with the plain pearl chamber, with the rose chamber, which is positioned like that, you see a small, you can directly see the difference. So there's a small shift. So positioning can then now be defined as adjustment of the reference point of the chamber with respect to the measuring depth. And we have these uh, prescriptions for the purpose for the beam calibration. We have for cobalt 60 at measuring depth. So the reference, this is the central axis, should be at measuring depths for high energy photons at measuring depths and for high, electric, high energy electrons, it must be 0.5 times the radius uh, deeper than the measuring depth, the so-called effective point of measurement. For depth dose measurement, it should be 0.6 times the radius deeper than the measuring depths for cobalt 60 for high energy photons, 0.6 deeper and 0.5 deeper. So it is a little bit mixed, strange. Hmm? But this is prescription. We have to follow it. Uh, this is then for plain parallel chambers. And it said for beam calibration and for depth dose measurement, position always the reference point, that is not clear here, the reference point should be at the measuring depth. So it's shown here, this is a depth of measurement of interest. This is a, a position for cobalt 60 and high energy photons. Okay. Done. But <laughs> positioning, it seems to be such a stupid thing, but you can make so much mistakes with that. And we will a little bit exercise it later on. So performance of a calibration procedure, the procedure now is uh, now appears quite simple. Take an ionization chamber for which a calibration factor is found in a certificate 
adjust the gem in the water following the position precision protocol, obtain charge under reference conditions. That means the charge has to be corrected for air density, air temperature. Uh, you have to uh, take into account the saturation polarity effect. Obtain KQ from an appropriate lookup table, which is offered in the protocol. And then, then it's done. Again, quite simple. Huh? There is only two points left. What exactly means obtain charge under reference conditions? I have already told that we have to, and the second one is we have uh, a lookup table, but how we get a quantity value for the quality KQ. So we need a procedure to determine the qu a quantitative measure for the beam quality. And uh, this is, uh, this, sh oh, what is this? This is important. The KQ values, which are offered in the protocol, if you want to use, are only valid under reference conditions. If you deviate from them, and one example is this measuring for electrons at maximum depth, which is not correct. There is prescription. We came to this later on. If we go to the calibration with electrons, you have to do the reference depth for electrons at a certain depth, and only there the, the KQ is valid. If you go to other one, it's not valid. The same is true for, for photons. We have a depth, a reference depth for perform measurements of how deep? 10 centimeters. Yeah. in most cases. In Germany, we have only 10 centimeters. In, in, in the in TRS protocol, you can also use for low energy, it's five centimeters. Why in such a deep, why so deep? Why not in the dose maximum? Why we do measurements in 10 centimeter depth? Hmm? Yeah, this is, I say, uh, an argument using, using the prescription. We have to follow the prescription, but there's also a scientific uh, reason for that. Um, that is the case, the electron contamination. And, and this can be quite different. And, 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 and we, have, we have a lot of electrons coming down, or say we have a different number of electrons, which is again not clear. It may depend again from, from, from the construction of the gantry. So we do have, and we get rid of all the electrons in 10 centimeter depth. Therefore, the prescription is at 10 centimeter depth. This is now taken directly from the, from the document. It's saying the reference condition uh, for photons, phantom material, phantom material should be water, phantom size, uh, uh, this size, source, chamber distance, 100 centimeter. Alternatively, I think this is not well done. I, sh I think it should only SSD 100 centimeter. And this is saying the distance between this focus and the chamber is 100 centimeter. I'm not happy with it. Uh, in Germany, we have only one SSD, and that's it. And that is a little bit uh, a small ambiguity. So air temperature, 20 degree, air pressure, uh, P0101.3 kilopascal, reference point of the chamber. For cylindrical chambers, the chamber axis. For plain bird chambers, at the inner surface of the entrance windows. Uh, depths in fandom for uh, of the reference point of the chamber. So what is this? I don't know. Field sites at, at the position of the reference point of the chamber. Again, some other uh, documents are saying that is a field size at the surface. Polarizing voltage as in calibration certificate, dose rate, uh, there are no reference values. So we have, of all these influence factors, we have mainly these three, the air temperature, the air pressure, and the polarizing voltage and pol uh, polarizing voltage polarity. In order, we, we cannot do measurements under these conditions normally. It's, we have to, to perform our measurements under arbitrary temperature and pressure. Therefore, we have to introduce these uh, correction factors, which are shown here. 
assuming that all these different influence factors are act independently from each other, a product of correction factor can be applied. And this is here the product of the different uh, correction factors. And we are, I will shortly discuss this is most important three correction factors, one for air temperature and pressure. And you are very well aware of this uh, formula which has to be applied. Okay. How to get the air pressure? Hmm? You need an instrument, yeah? And it must be calibrated to, to sea level, which is not automatically the case. <laughs> uh, so you can make, again, mistakes just to miss this three. Uh, you, you need a careful calibrated uh, uh, instrument for that. For temperature, it's less important. But you can see any mistake, say, if you, do a, if you have a 1% uncertainty in the measurement of air pressure, it directly goes to the, to the dose determination. Yeah? If you make an uncertainty of the temperature, it goes only with one third. So it's important to have a, a, a measurement device for the pressure which really is measuring the sea level. And there's one trick thing. Very often there is an, an airport in the neighborhood. You can ask them. You can ask, you, you can phone, can you tell me today the pressure? And please give me the pressure in, not on the sea level, but give me the air pressure on that ground where I am. So in Bolivian, it would be in 3,000 meter height. Or, so we have to take the air pressure not referring to sea level, but that I have said wrong. It must be referred to that level where you are really doing the measurements. And sometimes, again, I told you, if there is an airport in the, in the, in the neighborhood, one can ask them. They normally have a good, a, a good information on that. That may be. You have to check it. That is something which, if you don't know exactly, and, and you just take it, there's a risk to make a, a huge mistake. Polarity effect. Uh, this formula, you, I think you are well familiar with this formula. However, there is one thing, again, which can be go wrong. Has the calibration laboratory really corrected for the polarity effect? If you, if you have your certificate, has it, so you get your calibration factor. Is it, has it been corrected or not? You have to look in the certificate. Here's one example. And you look carefully, then you will find they have made no correction. So the consequence is, if, 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 it's, if it's not done here, the calibration factor refers to a certain polarity. It has not been corrected. So then if you are, if no polarity correction is performed during phase, it's, it, then it is included in the calibration factor. That means if the user beam quality is the same as in the calibration quality, so if you do a measurement in common 60, you must not correct the polarity correction no? because then you overdo it. It's, it, it, it. it's not in. If it's, so the user must not apply a polarity correction factor for that particular beam. But what is the thing that if it's another, if it's, it's high energy photons, what do you do with them? The polarity may, or the polarity influence can go up in electron beams for the Marcos chamber at 10 MeV, almost to 1%. So it, it is something which has to be corrected. So how to get now the, the polarity correction factor? You have to reproduce the quality of cobalt-60 and do your own measurements. And if you have no cobalt-60, and just use 6 MV for that. So estimate the polarity correction for the machine, for the quality which is used for the uh, calibration, 
Ideally, it should be cobalt-60. If it's not available, you can use 6MD. In this way, in the same way, you do the same for the user quality, the 15 MV, and you have to take the ratio of these tools now for the polarity correction. This is the correct way to perform the, quality, the polarity correction factor. And if you look in the document, it's well written, but it's written some pages after the first, uh, the first equations. And if you are in, in, in hurry, you will look, oh, I have to do saturation correction, I have to do polarity correction, I go through, there's a formula, oh fine, I do the formula, just, but you have to read the follow the readings and see what's going on. Then the next factor, there's always difference between the charge produced by the radiation and the actually measured one. This is due that there's a recombination of charges. We know that it's uh, positive ions and negative ions and uh, they can hit and then they can recombine. So the number of charge which is really measured is in, in, in a rule lower than that which has been created. On the other hand, we are using this uh, W value saying that the energy absorbed is the number, is, is refers to the, to the created I'm saying, uh, uh, charges. Uh, so there are different effects uh, which are saying the recombination of ions formed by separate ionization particle tracks term general or volume recombination and there is also initial recombination. There's a, a theory behind that which is time consuming and it's not so easy to understand. It's, it, ne it needs to know that the charge which is measured is less than the charge which is produced. And it's also different in pulsed radiation, like in an accelerator. And the code of practice is recommending that the correction factor is done in this way by the so-called two-voltage method. You do a method by the normal voltage, say for the far measurement for 400 voltage. Then you do a measurement with a reduced voltage, say 100, and you have different charges. They are clearly different. That is very, it's, it's remarkable how you can see that you really see a, a changed charge just by changing the, the, the current. And this is the ratio of the, of the, uh, of the uh, measured charges. And if you, ha if you have obtained these ratios, you have to apply this formula where here you have different coefficients, A0, A1, A2, according what ratio of charges you have, uh, of voltage you have used. So if you have in the pharma chamber 400 and 100 volts, so the ratio is four, you have to use these uh, factors to calculate the saturation. And please, if you, if you do a careful calibration, you always have to apply this correction. Uh, I have found our colleagues also in Germany are saying, ah, oh, it's a small effect, we don't need it. But I, a careful calibration definitely requires the correction of the saturation effect. Typically for 6 or 6 MV, 15 MV, for a pharma chamber, it's 0.3%. It's, it's a small amount. But it's something which you really can correct very clearly. Uh, this refers now to, to co uh, cobalt-60, which is less important, and I will go ahead. So the summary, if the chamber is used under conditions that differ from the reference condition, then the matter charge must be corrected for the influence quantities by so-called influence correction factors, and the most important is the KTP for air density, for the polarity effect, and for the saturation effect. So, uh, we may do such calibrations in different qualities. So the TRS is referring to low energy X-rays, to medium energy X-rays. These are all qualities which are addressed in the protocol. So there are the prescription and the data are available for all these types. Within each category of radiation, a particular quantity parameter, so-called the quality parameter, is defined. 
that may be different, important, the quality parameter, KQ, is defined in different way for different types of radiation. Yes. No, it, 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 it's a clear prescription how to determine the quality. Again, the clear prescription. You have to follow the prescription. It's true, it's 10 by 10, yeah? For photons, for photons. So the method to determine the quality parameter differs from one radiation to the other. Now we come to the photons. This is the definition of the quality parameter for high energy photons produced by clinical accelerators, the beam quality is specified by the so-called tissue phantom ratio TPR in 20 centimeter depth and in 10 centimeter depth. And here is, again, the condition how this has been to be measured. So, and this shows uh, how this can be done. You have here our water phantom, you have a 10 centimeter field in the depth of the ionization chamber. This is at 100 centimeter depth from here, from the focus to the chamber. And we have here a 10 centimeter depth. Then we do a measurement and then we simply fill up the water to 20 centimeters. We have two different measurements and the TPR is simply, uh, which is defined as a dose in 20 centimeter and 10 centimeter is very, in a very good approximation, the ratio of the two measurements. But there's another method which is using a PDD, which is called the PDD method and is showing here. We have our water phantom. Now a distance from the focus to the surface of 100 centimeter and we have the 100 centimeter field at the surface and we have our chamber in 10 centimeters and we get one result. We have it in 20 centimeters and we get one result. And we call this the ratio, PDD ratio, 20 centimeter and 10 centimeter. It's given by this ratio and the TPR is then obtained by this equation. By the way, the German protocol is saying only use this method. The, uh, the, the TRX protocol is saying you can use both methods. Later on in our, in our exercise, I recommend to use the second method. So, and if we have, now we have really a number, and by using these numbers, we can, here, this is the numbers of, of the beam quality, and now we can find all the quality correction factors which are now needed. And this is summary of the beam, of the photon calibration. This is the equation of how the calibration must be performed. In Germany, we always think this is the mother of all dosimetry equations. We call it the mother of all equations. Follows the positioning instruction of the protocol for depth dose measurement, position the effective point of measurement of the chamber at the measuring depth for photons, and saying that the effective point of measurement is 0.6 times the radius. In Germany, we are saying 0.5 times the radius. And in reality, you must say no one knows exactly where is the effective point. So it is an approximation. For beam calibrations, position is the reference point of the chamber at the measuring. This is for cylindrical chambers and for plane point chambers. These are the most important correction factors. The quality correction factor is given in tables provided in the DRS document in chapter six for photons and for high energy photons produced by clinical accelerators. The beam quality Q is all the time, sometimes called the quality index, is specified by the tissue phantom ratio TPR uh, by the produce photons. Uh, this parameter can be measured directly or determined by the depth dose measurement. Now I'm ready with calibration with photons, and again I will make a break, and then we come for the next talk to the calibration of electrons. <laughs>